Welcome on in everybody, Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you guys could subscribe here, hey man, that would mean a lot to me. Also, subscribe to the WQAM YouTube page. Watch Tobin and Leroy every single weekday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Game Day Uncensored, which you can get Sunday, four hours before kickoff, and you know, all that good stuff. Tomorrow I'll be boots on the ground for the Heat's final home preseason game, which will be a week out from their home opener against the Detroit Pistons. And today, some things of note, a lot of, uh, you know, newsworthy things over in heat practice, which was going on while I was on the air. But uh, we learned Jaime Jaquez Jr. still dealing with a little bit of a groin. He does believe that he is going to be back by the time the regular season is ready. Um, I believe they're going to be very careful with him. It's, I'm sure, a little bit frustrating for Jaime because this is the second occurrence now where he has gotten one game of action and then got hurt the same thing happened in the summer league where or maybe it was two i think it was played a game got hurt in the second game and you know we're dying to watch what jaime is all we have is uh you know one preseason game one miami pro game and one um and one summer league game so we have not gotten to see a lot of of jaime jaquez but uh, i think people have liked what they have seen so far hopefully other guys are getting healthy i believe he's the only guy who really didn't do anything at practice uh today as far as full speed and um suppose not sweating it too much and and hoping that we will get uh Jaime Jaquez back in the fold soon love to see a little bit of Nikola Jovic Kayla Martin's obviously been banged up we haven't seen Jimmy Butler yet because he's uh, got a dental procedure um so we haven't seen him in the preseason yet either and Spo was talking about this he's like he's not sweating a dress rehearsal per se because they feel like they can get in that in practice. Mind you, once they are done with preseason with the Houston game this week, then they still have a bunch of days of practice that they'll be able to get themselves ready and situated. We still do have questions with the point guard position. It was interesting today hearing uh, the Kyle Lowry still is holding firm to he expects to be the Miami Heat starter. And with Jay Rich dealing with some foot pain, we did get a chance to see Kyle back out on the home uh, running the point and looked good, you know, was was getting everybody involved, had a ton of assists, doing this Kyle Lowry thing, um, you know, not really taking a lot of shot attempts, really putting his emphasis on getting guys involved. But I am still of the belief, and I could be completely off on this, it still feels very much to me like Jay Rich is going to get the nod in the backcourt, that it is going to be a Tyler Hero Josh Richardson starting backcourt with Kyle being after that. I think that whenever that conversation does happen, um, it's going to go fine. I think that people have really overblown how disgruntled Kyle Lowry is. Um, I think that Kyle Lowry is a pro. He did make it known that he doesn't feel a, a need today. He doesn't feel a need to put a, a minutes restriction on everything. Spo echoed that same sentiment that they don't feel like there has to be any kind of restriction on him that he can go about this, that he is healthy. He does look in good shape. He did work his ass off this, uh, this off season was back at the, uh, the UFC facility. Now I did do a lot of that last year too. Um, I think with him, it, it is an age thing. You are worried about, you know, burdening him and making him feel like, uh, you know, he does have to carry the load. Um, and so, I still think that's the direction they're going to go. And a couple things that I found interesting from Spo here today. First was on Jay Rich talking about the experience he has as a ball handler and why it's this team in particular is not reliant or too reliant on whoever that, you know, quote unquote point guard is going to be. Just the versatility. Uh, the fact that he was able to do a, a couple seasons as uh, a point guard um, just adds to his skill set. Uh, whether we use him extended time, you know, there uh, remains to be seen. Uh, but it helps having guys that can do a lot of different things, uh, particularly with our roster, the way it's built. Um, that gives us uh, flexibility. We're also considerably different. I mean, it's, it's, it's impossible to compare our team now to that team. Like, we have so many multiple ball, ball handlers. It's, it's such a, fun, a great point by Spo because I know there are a lot of Heat fans that you know, are getting a little antsy because oh, Jay Rich is holding the ball in the games, you know, stepping out of bounds. You know, I could already hear the, uh, this is not the same team, dude. I mean, you're talking about a team back then, which really did 
yes, try and make Josh Richardson the focal point. And it was a very guard heavy team, you know, with him and Philly cheese and, uh, justice Winslow was a point guard, you know, Wayne Ellington and all these guys, Tyler Johnson, all these guys. A lot of the reason why D- Dwayne Wade originally didn't want to come back to that team was not necessarily, uh, slight the heat, but he was like, I don't, you know, of all these young guys, I don't know if I want, and then eventually he does get traded there, of course, but they did try and make Jay rich the man at the end of these games. And, you know, don't forget where Jay rich was. I mean, this is a guy that a lot of people didn't want to trade for Jimmy Butler when the Timberwolves talks were happening. So it's, um, it, it is a different place now. And I think there's another hint that led me at the end of this answer with Spo, which I'm going to play for you here, talking about positions. And this was another kind of window uh, where I was like, ah, it kind of speaks to me that he's not leaning towards starting Kyle at point. Whoever I have to designate, which I hate, point guard, two guards, it's so, it's a different language to me, you know, right now. I do it to placate, you know, the questions. That's not really how I view the game or how we're developing our game, and this has already been going on for a couple of years. But I, I understand it. I get it. Uh, those are just very conventional terms. So. And um, I think the league is also starting to, to get away from those terms a little bit, um, particularly when you have a guy like Bam. It just We can literally run our whole offense through him if we needed to. So there you go. I mean, talking about the idea that they don't even, he doesn't really even believe in traditional. And if you were going to talk about who are the traditional guys, you know, on this team, they don't have a traditional center in Bam Adebayo. You know, they have a, they have a six, nine, six, 10 ish Bam Adebayo who handles the ball, you know, runs the offense at, at times, sets people up, moves put screens for his shooters, all that type of stuff. You have Jimmy Butler, who the NBA GMs voted best, quote-unquote, shooting guard. You know, even though Jimmy will run some of the offense, will run the point, will do all of that. Um, Tyler is going to do some of that, has done some of that. And, you know, Kevin's probably the most prototypical guy that's going to be in the starting line of your typical four, stretch four um, type of guy. And then the other guy who's typical is is Kyle. Kyle is a typical point guard. He is a traditional point guard. It's a dying breed. There's not a lot of them left. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just is what it is. And, you know, Kyle shoots. The thing that's interesting with Kyle is Kyle's one of the, you know, the all-time leading three point uh three point makes in NBA history. What is Kyle Lowry in uh all time th- it's point leaders makes. I think Kyle Lowry is something like 13th all time in three point makes. And we've seen those games from time to time where he can get really, really hot. Yeah, Kyle Lowry, he is 13th overall in three point makes. You know, it, it'll be probably be a battle between him and Paul George. But and it pro- but maybe, what is he? He's 70 away from passing Paul Pierce this year for 12th all time. And last year, how did he have in total makes? Three point makes last year for Kyle Lowry, 100, 107. So if he hit that just this year, Kyle Lowry would be, yeah, he would be 12th all time. So still a guy who's hit a lot of shots in his career. Uh, but, yeah, is that typical QB one? And I think is probably been as passive shooting the ball in his career that he has in any other in his Toronto days for sure. But when I hear that from Spo, I just feel like when he could be swerving, could be, but it, it, it just feels like he's going in the direction of and the place he'd like to go is, you know, Tyler, a Tyler J. Rich backcourt and then have Kyle be that quarterback of the second unit with Caleb with Jaime, with the young guys, especially, you know, with a guy like Jovic, who also likes to pass the ball a lot. Hawk has looked very comfortable handling the ball and young, running the young guys. Like, I, I do think that this team, and Spo was talking a little bit about their versatility today, that he likes the team's versatility, that he likes it just in general. He thinks there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, you know, different things that they can do that are going to, to help them out and that they plan on using their versatility 
with this team. But I, I got the impressions listening to him talk about the positionless stuff. That made me feel very much like, oh, he's he he's going to go very much in that direction. He's not going to go traditional point guard, Tyler shooting guard. I, I don't think that's the way he's going to go. That, it could be dead wrong. We'll see what happens tomorrow um, because we have gotten a couple different looks at it. But, um, and I don't even necessarily know if that's a, a slight at Kyle. I think that he's done this. He's done this with the, with the, you know, Goron is the ultimate example of this where Goron, you know, had injuries, came off of surgeries and what was the role that had him in coming off the bench? Um, Kendrick Nunn was the starter. Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, uh, Jimmy Myers, Leonard and Mam. So they've done this before. And I I feel pretty strongly they're going to do that again. Just as a hunch, I'm not reporting. Um, just reading the tea leaves and listening to the coach. It just seems that like that's the direction he's going. And I think he's he, I think Spo is going to want to tinker with a lot of stuff. I think he's very very excited about this team. I think he's excited with a lot of the different pieces that they have. I think he wants to jumble a lot of stuff up try some new stuff out based on matchups and things like that um and then we'll see where it is you know in january we'll see where where they ultimately are and and what will strongly be the, the best part of this team but i you know he's gonna he's he's i think gonna mess around with some stuff rotational wise but i but i think ultimately out of the gate and again i just as a aside i think this stuff is very overblown because i think kyle lowry even coming off the bench, can be important for this team, can close for this team, can can do some really, really important things for this team. Um, you know, it just is what it, who's gonna Mike Biamonte gonna say in the starting five. That's all this comes down to, right? Um, and Kyle saying that he expects to start, but I really don't think even if he doesn't, I don't think he's gonna make this huge stink over it. But it uh it'll be an answer we'll have soon enough.